Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour podcast, quarantine edition. I am your host, Miss Kev on stage, and I'm joined by my husband and co-host. The Kev on stage. And we are joined. Listen, y'all flooded my DMs. My Y'all were tagging me in posts. Y'all were emailing me. Please get to hear and fairing on the podcast. Please get to hear and fairing on the podcast. And I was like, what happened? But apparently on, was it DIYS? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it was like a two hour episode. It was long. Um, a two hour episode of DIYS, which is Tahir's episode that he co-hosts with Patrick Cloud. What's Patrick's real last name? Houston. Okay. Um, that they co-host and apparently got real deep. Mm -hmm. and, and tears may have. Tahir was trying not to cry. He got frozen with the not cry face. What is that face? Like, <laughs> and I was like, to hear you gone, bro. That tear, your tear was so far out, it can't go back in. You either got to wipe it or let it fall. One of the that other. Tear jumped, that tear jumped out my eye like, like Trinity on the Matrix. It jumped through that. was like, oh. <laughs> I'm too funny this one because I got I it immediately. The tear like jumping and then landed back on the cheek and sliding oh, down. The harder of a man you are, the uglier face you make when you when you cry because yeah. you don't the ugly face comes from trying not to cry That's if you just true. let yourself go you won't look so ugly but trying to you be trying to hold up <laughs> that's me i've been trying to hold up like, bro i didn't even know that was coming i would have faked the fire if i knew it was coming i would have set my apartment on fire <laughs> okay well let's not get crazy Dang, bro! <laughs> God, no! Why we were just laughing. I was like, "Yeah, that's crazy." And it was, and it was like, I was like, uh "Oh." <laughs> as soon as I heard, I was like, "I gotta get him some to wipe his face." He don't do this. <laughs> she ran and grabbed that tissue so fast. I like you know, in the movies when the when the security's breach, they pull the woo woo. Bro, <laughs> it's happening! It's happening! All hands on deck. This is threat level orange. I was so mad. Oh, that's fantastic. That, that, that vulnerability, vulnerability sneaked out like. <laughs> out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> that is literally oh. the okay. worst. Feel your that, feels, kind of okay. that kind of hit you and you were unprepared is quite literally the worst thing ever. And it happens to me all the time. And I'm just like, ooh. I just got emotional. I'm just like, why? And then she smacks why? me. And then I don't like being touched like that because I feel like you're trying to like gear my tears out. I just want to let you know I care for you, but I'm gonna let your car on. I'm not gonna touch you. I'll just push, do this. I'll push you. I'll push you. I'll touch you. <laughs> What's the cry? Ooh, box you out. <laughs> okay. Um, so who we have with us today again by popular demand is none other than to hear and bear and more. Let's give them a round of applause in our studio audience, which consists of just me and Kev today. <laughs> We're social distancing, so ain't nobody in here. But thank you guys so very much for being here with us today. I'm super excited about this episode. Um, and people are too, you guys literally i posted a picture of them first of all it was the flyest picture it's one of my favorite pictures of y'all if i'm allowed to have a favorite picture of y'all but i do and it's that one and uh, it's because i think fair people are like ferret is beautiful and i was like i know <laughs> i was oh, in the comments like oh, when you say it. that on somebody's comment <laughs> I know. I already know. Like, I know. <laughs> so I'm super excited to so um, have you guys here with us and to chat. We're just going to chit chat and talk it up and, you know, do the things. Um, but before we get started, we want to do a throwback to that or this, this or that with Kevin List. But we are doing it with. We're switching it up. It's actually not that or this. Okay. It's called the Misery Index. I've been buying literally every game every possible game in Target that you can play virtually with your friends. Uh, so the misery index is life events on a scale from zero to miserable. We're not playing the game exactly how it's played. We're just going to pick two cards for this or that. So I picked two cards out and each of us has to decide what is the worst option, one or the other. Okay. So Farron to here and this, okay. what is worse? You visit a strip club and find out your daughter is dancing oh. or you accidentally send a nude selfie to your entire office. Oh. And this is when you worked at a big company, Boeing, Boeing, uh, Farron, you work around. Caldwell, 
Caldwell Banker. <laughs> yeah, to hear um, White Castle, I guess. I don't know what the biggest company you worked at You're was. Rude. <laughs> All death, maybe. I don't know. Was that the biggest company you worked at? Didn't he work at a prison? He worked at a school. I did. I worked at a charter school. And I worked for St. Louis Public Schools, too. I was a teacher for St. Louis Public Schools, too. What was you teaching the kids how to be a bowling ball? <laughs> Okay, you pick whatever one it is. No, no, my bad. <laughs> it's kind of late, babe. It's kind of late. <laughs> first, was, hey, no, I don't, uh -uh, I don't laugh at that. Don't do my bad. Okay. okay, so what's worse? You visit a strip club and you find out your daughter is there pole dancing, killing it. I mean, just she's absolutely the, the cream of the crop. She's all the way to the top of the pole, great core strength, everything. <laughs> or you send a nude to accompany the entire office over 100 people. Fan or tear, we'll let you guys go first. Is it a good nude or am I flaccid? <laughs> You're on soft, totally on soft. There would be a question that a man would ask. Right, because I'm thinking, like, I I'm send a, accidentally send a nude at work, lucky them. <laughs> Max half chub. <laughs> Max half chub? Yeah. But you're not fully, you're not fully ready. You weren't, you were just warming up. <laughs> Whoa, <what's> <laughs> no, you gotta do it for your own. Y'all don't do it as a group. No, I was I was asking her opinion of my uh, mid chub. Oh. <laughs> I'm still willing to take that risk right now. <laughs> still got it, well, baby. You know what? Let me. What What do you think about the mid? About the mid? Do <laughs> you think that's the most embarrassing? Oh my god! That's hilarious. Because oh, oh. like the strip club thing is like, I I don't like strip clubs. Personally, I, I've never been really a big fan of them. Like chicken strip uh, clubs? Huh? You like chicken strip clubs? Chicken strip clubs, that's something different. You walk in, they pat you down, and they give you like your choice of five different sauces. Oh my God. Somebody dressed in the chicken suit come out and be like, mm, ah! I don't like where this is going. Ah! What's happening out? That is a business I could totally get behind. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about franchises, franchises galore. Um, <laughs> Well, in my opinion, um, not it's good that my daughter is a really good stripper and she got all the core strength. And I also feel like that's something that I don't know if I would be super embarrassed by it because I'm all about her owning her body. And so if that's what she chooses to do, then it's like, just be real good at it. <laughs> Don't be, having, don't be embarrassed me by stripping. No, by having no rhythm. I don't care. If you want to you better be the best worker out there. You better be diamond. Right. <laughs> I mean, because I can't control that. So I don't know. I don't know if I would be super embarrassed by it. I would be more embarrassed about the, about the nude at work. It's like. Now, mind you, in this situation, you don't know your daughter's stripping. You just happen to go to a strip club, and then she's up there. Right. So that's See, I would be more hurt that I didn't know before I got there. Yeah, and that's why you got to decide which, which is worse. Because <laughs> uh, if you know she's a stripper and she's just at work, that's one. Yeah. But so, you like, oh, yeah, let's go to strip club, bachelor party. My the baby! Her she keeping got... it from me will probably be worse than dealing with the, the drama of accidentally sending a nude at work. Yeah, the, the kid and Farron are like, I mean, they share a brain. <laughs> I, I tell them all the time. Like, they literally share, they talk the same, they make the same mistakes, they both clumsy. It's literally like living with a clone of her. I'll do your babe. <laughs> I mean, she, but she can't deny it, though. Look at that face. It's adorable, she but she clumsy as hell. I know, I love she it. She knew it was true, so she looked off to the side. <laughs> so what are you picking, Farron? Um, the, the worst thing, like, when, when it all, I would say, the the finding out my finding out that way that my kid is a stripper is the worst. Okay. Okay. Ta 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 ear. I'm gonna just go with whatever she said. Oh <laughs> man, say your own thing. Be your own man. You gonna say whatever Liz gonna say? I am. I say whatever I want to say. She don't control me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Finding out my daughter working at a strip club. You's a sucker. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> Sending a, a nude of my body to the entire <laughs> office, absolutely worse. I got nothing to be proud of. There's nothing like, oh, man, he's got muscles. He's got a large peen. 
He nothing. It would just be like, oh. But see, y- y'all don't have a daughter either, so it's it's a little different. Yeah, this is very theoretical for me. Oh, go ahead. Tell well, you I mean, you're saying. imagining. Oh, you know, wait a minute. Right. Let's switch it. Let's make it fit. Find out that one of the boys. It's stripping. Stripping. They're working at a gay <laughs> strip club. That part. But they're not. Matter. No, no, they're not gay. That's they just work and they just like, hey man, they tip really well here. <laughs> I would be a bartender at a gay strip club. Absolutely. Okay. Tank said that he he, that he had performed at a gay um something, and they're like, dude, why are you doing that? He was like, bro, they pay out of this world. He took bro. his show. He performed like there was like it was women there. He was like, I don't care. That check bro. was crazy. That's crazy. I told I told Fire about this dude when I worked at the jail. It was this dude named Justin who was a teacher there. And he was leaving. He's moving back to uh, Texas. And he was like, put together this get together, and <laughs> all the teachers were supposed to go, right? So it was in West Hollywood. Um, and I'll get there early because y'all know how I am about time. I'll get there early. And he mm-hmm. pulls up shortly after. And like, we're just waiting around, and um, nobody else shows up. So he was like, all right, well, let's go grab a table. So we walk over to the, the I forgot where it was at, Katina or uh, somewhere. We walk over to the spot. And we're walking down the street, and there's these two guys walk past, and one of them was like, mm. And then the dude I was with, Justin, was like, he good. And I was like, thank you. The whole time not realizing you was on how, how, yeah, how this is looking. <laughs> so we get in there, we sit down, we grab a table. The dude comes over, was like, yo, y'all want to grab some drinks? It's still happy hour. Y'all can get the small one or the big one. I was like, uh, yeah, let me get the big one. He's like, yeah, I just have it. He had it. And so the dude comes back with just one and gives two stars. And I was like, nah, he, he wanted his own. <laughs> he wanted his own, right? And so we got nachos and stuff. And we sharing nachos, just talking. And I was like, I think I'm on a date. <laughs> you definitely were. <laughs> Bruh, I got tricked into a date. Oh, my God. Trying to be a supportive co-worker. <laughs> I mean, he was a gentleman. He paid for everything. Even though it was his going away, he paid for everything. <laughs> Walked into my car. But I was just like, yo, this <laughs> Put me on a date. <laughs> you came home and told me that story, and I was like, "You." No, are he Christian said, Christian. "Am I on a hold? On, hold, on, hold on. Am I the girl? Am I the girl? <laughs> Am I the one?" No. When he hit me with the "He good," I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> I can speak for myself. <laughs> He right, but I can speak for myself. I'm my own man. But you can't I did cl- I did clutch my pearls. Oh <coughs> my gosh, my that teacher. dude realizing in the middle of a the large martini. Wait, wait, wait. Bro, I- nobody has showed up in 45 minutes, and I was like, because Takara was supposed to come. <laughs> Takara didn't come. This is me and him sharing nachos and having uh margaritas. And I was just like, well, he trying to smash, bro. <laughs> The homie tried to smash, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Like, that was a look. I that was a look. I was a little flatter because I was like more overweight then, but I was still like, "Come on, bro! I got a whole lady at home, bro. What you doing, bro? I got a whole wife at home. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. A lot of people do. Oh, I was about to say he probably like, yeah, my boyfriend does too. <laughs> <laughs> Walking to the car, just standing there like, so this is fun. Hey, hey, man, get in your car, bro. Get in your car, bro. <laughs> Back of my ears, you oh, so Did you do answer? Uh, yeah, I, it, it'll be worse. Oh. I'm, I'm kind of along the same lines as Farron. Uh, my son hiding it from me be one thing. My thing is I'm embarrassed. If my naked body sent out to people, I'm embarrassed. There's more people. I got to see the people at work again. Like, my kid work at a strip club, gay or sh- straight one. That's your life. You know, you find out, hey, man, my son was out there, bro. He was, he was twerking, man. Right? Hey, you know, <laughs> shoot, bills ain't going to pay themselves. But to see my body, I don't have a good body. I don't have body that people want to see. This is true. I don't want to see your body in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some outfits you wore. I was like, you got to put a sweat on, fam. Your breasts are just doing, <laughs> your titties is really tittying right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you guys something. If you're going to be sending any sort of nudes or if you're going to be on a stage twerking and whatnot or being in a male review, you may as well pop a blue chew or two 
So you can be strong, follow me, uh, while you are performing. <laughs> They don't work for nipples, Kev. Yours are still going to be flaccid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys know that Blue Chew, they are friends of the podcast. Why? Because they give you the erection you deserve. We're in quarantine, and there will be a baby boom in Bruh. nine months. And the reason why is because Blue Chew makes the world go round. Blue Chew is pres prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door in a discreet package. And since we're all at home, we know we all got nosy the rosy neighbor that's be all up in your business. You can get this shipped to your home in a very discreet package. You don't have to worry about nobody knowing your business and you can get it on and popping within the four walls of your own home. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use special promo code LOVE, L-O-V-E. L -O -V -E. All you're gonna do is pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's bluechew.com. That's blue like the color, B-L-U-E, chew.com, promo code LOVE, love. To try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. And of course, as always, we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. All right, you got to answer before we move on. Oh, my answer is definitely new to my office. Oh, so you can say new to the whole office, but not to me. No, that would be my embarrassing thing. Mm -hmm. In the hypothetical, you sent it. How It'd be your own wife. Okay. Wait, so you've been right. this thing you would have been trying to send it to me, you sent it to the office. Yes. Okay, that's cool. That's the story. It's like whatever yeah, makes you is just me, you. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be worse. Wouldn't it? Oh, that just made me like my heart is like palpitating okay, right now. Hush, I don't want you gonna ruin your chance. And this again. is why nudes are not sent because mistakes can be made, phones can be hacked. Russia is out here causing all of this madness in the United States of America. I take nude pics of you with my eyes. And that's fine. When you're naked, I'll be like, mm-hmm. Oh, mistakes, <laughs> mistakes can be made. Episodes can be deleted off of Vimeo and off of laptops. <laughs> Donuts can be given away. Oh, you my list? God. <laughs> Are you going to list? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Top tiers of cakes can be eaten. Oh my God. Okay, you guys. Okay, so let's just, I'm actually, when you guys go to I'm going to go on there and apologize. This is what happened, you guys, because Tahir, I don't know why all of these happens with Tahir. Like, all the things that I do are with Tahir. So this is what happened. The guy, the squad cast filmed two episodes? Mm -hmm. Apparently, they were hysterical, child. I don't oh, know. Oh, my God. One was the most legendary episode we've ever shot. And then... It was put on the uh, Vimeo drive and I couldn't sleep. And I woke up at like literally two o'clock in the morning and received a text from one of the moderators saying that there was like some personal information in there. And child, all I was trying to do was remove it from people being able to watch it. I deleted the whole file. Let me tell you why this is even worse than she's describing. I put it on Vimeo, sent it to Tahir. I thought he had delete, downloaded it already. So he texted me like, hey, did anybody, Kev, he was like, Kev, did you delete that Vimeo file? I was like, no, because I never delete anything on Vimeo until it's up. Actually, I never really delete anything. We pay extra to have it saved on Vimeo. So I asked Josh, and they, Josh was like, no, I would never. Doe's like, no, I would never. Greg's like, no. So I'm like, man, what happened to this? And then Lisa put in our group chat just the eyes. And my heart jumped out of my chest. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> then I go on my laptop, and I'm almost certain I figured out what happened. My laptop, I saved it on my desktop to upload to Vimeo. And I never delete anything off my laptop until it's posted. Yeah. So I can keep it on YouTube saved. The kids, all my laptops and my computers are all um, same, same iCloud. Mm -hmm. I th and I never delete video footage until it's posted. I think one of the kids deleted the file to make room on another computer they were using for their schoolwork. So I went, and that's why that dog on recovery software didn't work, because oh. it wasn't deleted off of my laptop. So I spent three hours, I bought software, I called on my hacker friends looking for this episode, and this thing is gone. I'm and so I'm like, sorry. Melissa doesn't even go in Vimeo. Don't. You don't, like, I why don't. don't you be, 
and I was sleeping. She was like, Kev, something, something was happening. I was like, in the, it was in the middle of the night, so it I didn't even know what she was talking night, about. I was like, what? She was like, we said something about the bank online. And I was like, okay. I said, I think I said, let's just look at it in the morning. And she was like, nah, now. And I had to tell the squad. I told to hear first, and I was like, "Bro, I almost cried." Yeah, I know. I, I this, this is here's the thing, though. This is what Kev did. Kev said, "He said, why didn't you download it?" <laughs> he was like, well, I was still editing the other oh, one. Oh, I and didn't say. Like, well, no, let me finish. Let, let, let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. Can I finish? Can I finish? Let me finish. Can I finish? <laughs> Kev was like, well, "Why didn't you download it?" Because I hit him Friday. We shot it on Wednesday. I hit him Friday. Like, yo, did the link expire or something like that? Does all the check-in, then he figures it out and hit me back like, well, why didn't you download it yesterday? Well, when I sent it, I was like, well, I was still editing. Oh, you are putting tone let in my voice that was let not there. Finish. Can I finish? Let, let me finish. Let me how I was no, saying. No, I was let like, me finish, Kevin. I'm going to tell Kevin, you how I finish it. You're doing what you do. You're doing what you do. <laughs> Don't be a whole you right now. Be a whole person. <laughs> I was still editing. I was still editing the, the next Squadcast. Right, so I couldn't because the computer I'm editing on doesn't have space, so I couldn't download another two videos while I'm editing. Got so me. I finished up Thursday, uploaded it Friday, tried to download the next one so I could start editing that one. Kev tries to spin it on me like it's my fault that I didn't work. <laughs> Why you ain't downloaded? Oh, I'm can I talk now? And then, <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Now you can talk. That was a plea to hear. That was. Why didn't you download it? It was it was because <laughs> if you would have downloaded it, we would have it. And 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 then Liz, Liz did something she never did. Oh I just God. why you didn't download to hear? Tell me why. And I knew why. I knew it's because you didn't have the space. It's four kids. Oh. And I was in there like, I, what do you do? What do you do? Nothing. There was a you moment in there that was so funny. To be honest, the first episode was man. It was actually my least favorite squad cast we had ever shot. I was like, man, this one kind of sucks. Tone wasn't really paying attention. But that second one? Oh. oh. Especially at the end? That oh. second one? And you can't get it back. You can never recreate that. It will never. Listen, look, look at me, Liz. It will never happen in the history. Look, look, look you take that. Look at take that. that. It will <laughs> never happen in the history of life again. Those three of events. Unless Jesus hits the rewind button on earth. No, nah, because then we're going to have to go over Corona again. We need to push forward. <laughs> we cannot. Yo, before we, I, I know we got to get into it. We're about 20 minutes in. We ain't said nothing. I was driving home. So, you know, I've been hiking for exercise because they closed the gym, right? I mm -hmm. drive up to the place where I've been hiking. At. I usually hike for an hour and a half every day. I get to the trail, y'all. The trail is closed. Yeah. The yeah. city of Los Angeles, they had just said a week ago, walk, well, go to the trail. Trail closed. Bruh, I came home in my car and I was just like, ah! <laughs> Everything is broke. The tour messed up. The conference stuff, they just moved Essence, which I had a show booked at Essence. Mm -hmm. I had brand deals lined up with Essence. I had another show in Lafayette, which is a drive away from Essence. The, the corona is messing everything up. I can't go to the gym. I can't go high. All I can do is walk or do in-home workouts. I don't like being musty in this little room. Go outside. That's what we do is our yeah. eyes outside. I've been going outside, but my thing is the hike was really, like, taxing. It was, yeah. it was like, cardio. I was, like, sweating, pouring. Like, it was, it'd be, like, straight up. And there's nothing I can walk in my neighborhood that is that intense. No, no, no. I'm going to send you what we do. It's literally just a sheet. It's, like, your, uh, every letter correlates with the exercise thing. I saw it, but I'ma just walk. I That's saw what it. I'ma just walk. Just go to drive to like a, a hilly area or something. That's what I'ma do. Here. There's a hilly area. I have a backup yeah. walker plan. It's just That's not as intense deal. as that trail. That trail was yeah. was it was tough. Yeah. It was like an 80 to 90 minute workout. But anyway. Well, I am sorry. I will go on the podcast tomorrow and apologize to you guys because I do feel so bad. I was downloading software trying to make it do what it do, child. It was just like, e -e 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 -e. man, we tried. Because to hear, by the time I hit you, I had already tried. It was I only hit you when I realized it was gone, gone. Mm -hmm. Cause my thing that I feel bad about, and I know Melissa, like it just was the it was the perfect storm of mistakes. You hadn't yeah. downloaded it yet. I it got deleted off my thing. I didn't. We the one time we didn't go live. To, I usually go live unlisted, even if I don't put it on Patreon, just in case. It was just a perfect storm of, of mistakes. And I just was like, man, this, 
like I just feel bad for wasting the people's time. Like that's three, two and a half hours of people's time that we can't, we can't even do those episodes. We got to do another set of episodes because we can't, we're not even going to find the fun of doing the same thing. We might be able to. Yeah, man. I don't know. But getting started so Farron can talk because everybody want to hear what Farron got to say anyway. Yeah, Nobody came I got to hear what Farron has to say. And so uh, while we're all at home and we're not working, we're all going to be looking for ways to save some money in any way, shape, or form, especially since we can't go out into the stores. We're all going to be doing all of our shopping online. And you want to use Honey while you're online shopping. The reason why is because they will help you save money autonomatically you don't have to do nothing i have been shopping on target i have been shopping on um shopping everywhere because i've been doing all of our home support stuff i get free shipping when i use um honey when i go to target on macy's you can get i get 10 percent off all of these discounts they automatically apply to your shopping cart you don't have to do anything and it is an, it is fantastic why because it is money back in my pocket and when you're trying to furnish a whole entire house you need as much money in your pocket as possible because you got other stuff you need to buy so what are you going to do not using honey is literally passing up free money it's free to use and installs in just a few seconds plus it's backed by paypal so you know it's good get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash love love joinhoney.com slash love love honey supports over thirty thousand stores online and has over a hundred thousand five-star reviews on google chrome store it's very easy you when you go to check out the little box drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon and then watch the price drop it's winter winter chicken dinner chicken dinner um we were just talking about working out and like we were talking about the people the essential workers that are keeping us safe while we stay at home i want to tell you about rothy's i actually wore my rothy's when we did our commercial which was the last thing that we did in real life when we were outside living our lives out and about when that was a fun thing to do um but on the commercial i was standing for like 12 hours filming shooting was real it was day. a real production day and i have a blog that's being edited right now and in the blog you will be able to see i have on my rocky shoes why because i mean what i say when i say that they are comfortable and they are shoes that are meant to last all day and if you are in one of these essential working field and you are on your feet all day, especially if you're in the medical field, you want to get yourself a pair of Rothy's. Check out the amazing shoes and bags available right now at rothys.com slash love hour. That's rothys.com. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash love hour. Love hour. Style and sustainability met, meet to create your new favorites. Head to rothys.com slash love hour today. All right, can we get into this episode? Yeah. Let's do it. So, <laughs> Baron, to hear, folks are completely enamored by you guys. Um, I think you guys do a really, and this isn't a hit, this is actually like a legitimate um, uh, compliment, doing a really good job of keeping what's sacred private. And so I think, but because of that, people are like, well, who's Tahir's wife? How did they meet? How long they been together? So let's start from the beginning, child. How long have y'all been together? How long How long ago did you guys meet? What is your love story? Give us all the tea, child. <laughs> you want to start with? Let you go on uh, <laughs> um, So we met, what, 15 years ago now in college. Is this um, Harry Beecher Stowe Elementary College? Don't be disrespectful. <laughs> Can I cut some here? No. <laughs> I'm going to text it to you, Kev. <laughs> Although we have had people that curse, but I don't know if you're about to drop the F bomb. No, to hear. Don't. My, my, my phone's broke. Don't. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yes, <laughs> that was Harris State University <laughs> uh, in St. Louis. Yeah, so we met there. And actually, uh, you don't remember the very first time we met because. No, you don't. He thinks he does. He doesn't. <laughs> right. So, um, but he approached me because he was doing comedy then too. And he um, approached me about a show or something he was doing, handed me a flyer and tried to chat me up or whatever. And um, that didn't stick and I didn't go to the show. Uh, so <laughs> You don't remember the first time y'all met and you didn't go to his first show? Right, right. <laughs> 
y'all that y'all was married then. That's <laughs> <married behavior. laughs> but, but what? So I saw her again, and he called me out. <laughs> called her out on it, and got her number right. Okay. Bro, she hit me with the home phone. Now, cell phones were a thing at this time. Ben hit me with a young I didn't even have a cell phone, phone though. I <clears throat> so I called. I didn't know it was. I, I called like, yo, what up? Papa, <laughs> you're on the line with your boy. What's Papa? Stop. No. My sister was like, Stop. who you want to speak to? I was like, uh, Farron, is Farron in there? No, that's not what happened. So I actually initially <laughs> gave him my middle name, Patrice, because and listening to him talk, I was like, he's not going to say my first name right. So. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so what do you mean in listening to him talk? Where, where you been hard for to hear? Her name is Farron. She was like, oh, that's, that's entirely too much for that. I've you heard heard? so many people pronounce it as Fern, and it's like, well, that's wrong. So, Names are hard, um, too. <laughs> what'd you say? I said, wording is hard. Names are hard, too. Right. So I told him, you know, I gave him my middle name. And so he called the house asking for Patrice. And was it my sister that answered the phone? My sister. sister was like, Fair? And so he's, wait, that's not the name I said. And he called me out on that. Time. I was like, she gave me a, a club name? Wow. <laughs> she gave me the club name and the home phone? Oh, she out here wilding with your boy. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, dang it. Yeah, I think at that point, because some time had passed, and I was actually, when we met the very first time, I was with someone else, and we broke up by the time we met the second time. Got you. And um, I, was that? Yeah, we started hanging out, going out, blah, blah, blah. And um, later found out that, actually, I knew earlier, but um, I was pregnant with Kendall when we actually started dating. You had sex before you met Tahir? What'd you say? You had sex before you met Tahir? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tahir, did you know? <laughs> I don't want a virgin. <laughs> She better come with some on-the-job training. <laughs> I got to teach you everything, Charlie. This ain't going to work. I'm glad you said it like that, though. <laughs> I'm having to get it together. Used cars are better. <laughs> OK, you will not compare me to a used car. No, I'm not saying like used car, babe. I'm just saying. I know. Don't, don't die. Yeah. No. Take it too far. Trying to be funny. Every huh? time to hear, every time. You got to learn where the line. Here's the line. I crossed it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so keep going. Anyway, so, um, yeah, and I told him yeah, shortly after, because I realized, like, oh, he's, like, hanging around for, like, he's trying to make this something. So let me just tell him, like, yo, this is, I'm pregnant. This like, can't be anything. <laughs> baby on the way. Let me just let you know so, where they go. I got the baby, baby. I literally come. found out I was pregnant a week after I had broken up with my ex. So, and it wasn't worth going back. Mm -hmm. So. It was like this me, me and my kid, you know? And so um told him and he was like, Well, that doesn't change how I feel about you. And we just kept hanging out. We never went exclusive or anything, but we just people thought we were together. And once I started showing, they thought it was his because we were always together. Oh. Uh, yeah. But uh, Kendall, who's taller than to here now, right? <laughs> she's taller than both of us. She's much taller than to hear. As he picks up his phone. <laughs> Check your phone. <laughs> <laughs> when she told me, we hadn't even like done anything. No. So I'm like, she was like, hey, I just want to let you know um, I'm two months pregnant. And I was like, we ain't done nothing. To <laughs> hear, like, mean? not again, not again. We <laughs> <laughs> only held hands. What are you talking about? <laughs> We only held hands. That was like literally it. Yeah, yeah. But I liked it though. So like, she would, she would she would come over to the house in between her classes, and so I just started buying food that she yes. liked. So when she came to the house, she had something to eat. 
that was nice. Like her little pregnant body wanted. <laughs> she called me over the weekend. It was like, I'm at the grocery store. What do you want me to grab? He was so sweet. Who knew like, that Tahir was this sweet? Oh, Tahir is your friend? We said on tour, Tahir's the most considerate person of all of us. He it's is. Not even, it's not even close. He is the most considerate friend. You mean to me. <laughs> well, you did. Gave away my donuts. <laughs> Let me do. Have we told the story of the love hour? Listen, we told the story so many times. Let's just tell it quickly again. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want her to get her shine because people never get to see her. So okay. let me, let's tell it at the end. We'll table it. But I want to make sure. That's how we met. I just told with like the the beginnings. Well, Melissa got more questions. I do. I love that. Um, I don't think I realized that timeline. Me myself personally. Um, sorry. So okay. So from the time that, um. You were pregnant. You found out you guys were pregnant. You guys made it official, I'm assuming. Like, lead us up to, I'm going to set it up so you guys can talk. Lead us up to making it official, getting married, and moving. Although I think maybe it was moving and then getting married. But anyway, tell us that story. Get us to L.A. No, oh, wow. So that's, uh, it was a lot of time. We didn't actually become an actual couple uh, until like seven years later. Oh, we were like, I was, we were, we were friends with benefits, basically. Um, no better way of saying it. Okay. Oh, that's real. I didn't know that was real. We both still had like other relationships and, but then our paths would cross and it's like, Hey, friend. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it just, it wow. went for a long time. It went for a long time. And then finally, I um, decided like, okay, I have to, I have to leave you alone. I'm not going to move on if I keep holding on How to you. How far into your relationship was this moment? This you? was, what, five, five years maybe? Okay. Yeah. This 2010? This is after I moved to LA? Mm hmm Okay. So yeah, it was this about is five years. This is 2010. Ooh. Okay. So Kendall's five. Yes. Okay. So, Side note, I was there when Kendall was, was born. born. He was there when she was born. She he called me. Oh, uh, delivery room? He called me. Yeah. She was like, hey, it's finna happen. I was like, cool, I'll be there. I drove mm -hmm. from St. Louis to Illinois to go to the uh, the hospital, get to the hospital. It's me and her there. And then her sister comes there and was like, get out. I was like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, the yeah, my, my family is really close, which is probably why Kendall and I are so close, because like we just grew up just in a very, very, very tight-knit family. So when my mom and my sister got there, it's like he, they put him out, and they wanted to be by my side. Yeah. But he was first there. He was first on the scene. First, yeah. first yeah. officer on the scene. <laughs> Made contact. Not talking about? Um, yeah, but like five years later, um, I, you know, cut ties, uh, deleted his number, unfollowed on social media, all that stuff, and was actually in another relationship, living with somebody, and that was toxic. So, uh, once that ended, a couple months later, I turn around, I'm at church, and I turn around, and he's standing in the back of the church looking for me. And it just, that was like day one, and that led to me coming out here and us getting married. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. To Wait, I need to hear a side of the story. How did you wind up with her? What was going on in your mind? Uh, my, my guy sister was opening up her second location of a tech shop. So she asked me to come back to St. Louis to run that shop for her. So I went back to St. Louis December 2011. Um, spent Christmas there. I was staying at one of the properties that my sister owned. And uh, January hit, and I couldn't stop thinking about her. So I was like, I'm going to find her. So I went online, couldn't find her, didn't have a phone number anymore. Um, and what I went to her. Time gap between the time of the breakup and the church meeting? Two, two and a half, two and some okay. change. Okay. So um, went to the church on a Sunday. I think it was January 7th or January 8th. Okay. Um, I'm looking through the, like, I'm, I'm in the back, like, right where you enter. And this, she go to this old church, like, spirits and everything in there. Uh, so they got these little windows, and I'm looking through the window, like, trying to find her. 
And I think her niece or her sister looked back first and was like, girl, this Negro is here. So she looked back. She was like, okay, does the church finger come out? And she was like, hey. And the craziest thing, this, this, is, this is how things all start coming together. So she wasn't even going to the church anymore. She had stopped going to that church. She was only there because somebody at the church had previously passed, and she was there, like, paying her respects. It was, like, the service after the funeral. So we end up hanging out that night, and then basically every day after that while I was in town, we hung out. I went back to L.A. in February, and I told my roommate, uh, like, yo, it's getting kind of serious. I think that she's going to uh, – I think she might move out here. I didn't even know at the time. I just put it out there. He was like, all right, cool. Well, I'll move out and you can have a place. I'm like, perfect. You know what I'm saying? We was in Hollywood, two bedroom, central air, one guaranteed spot. Good little amount. It was, it was solid, right? So, one guaranteed spot. That, yeah, listen, all these details those matter all, in man, LA. That's a good place in this LA. Is it. Central that air, part. Central air spot. spot, sign me up. Right. So, because um, at this point, I only had two cars out here. I had uh, an Altima and I, had, I think I had just bought my Nova. So, um, went back. I asked her to be my girl on February 14th. It was the corniest thing ever, but it just kind of worked out like that. Uh, we went to an Eric Benet concert. I took her to an Eric Benet concert for, for uh, Valentine's Day. We stayed in a hotel. Uh, it was really dope. I still got those pictures, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forming a cavity listening to this story. This is mm-hmm. seriously yes. Wrong. Wrong, too. <laughs> Wrong. I knew I knew I was gonna I knew it was gonna be the thing, so I was like, hey. I literally right? had a sweet moment, and y'all talking about shut up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we trust each other a lot. We literally only spent time with each other. Like I would go pick up her from work or in her car and, and drop Kendall off at of school. Like it was it was a lot. So get back out to LA. Tell my landlord my my roommate's gonna move out. He was like, well, you gotta move out too. I was like, what? He was like, I need you out. I'm like. Why? We've never been late. There's never been any discrepancies, anything like that. He's like, yeah, I, I just need the place. I was like, I'll, it's, it's February. I say, I'll pay to December. I'll pay rent to December right now. He's like, well, by law, I, can't, I can only technically take two months of rent from you. I was like, okay, cool. So start looking. Find, I'm searching all over. Then we find a spot. I find a spot in Glendale. So uh, move out here, show her the place. Fly her out here so she can take a look at the place, make sure it's good. It was in an area with Blue Ribbon School, so your kid had a good school to go to. While she was out here, it's over her birthday, so I invited some friends on. We had a small surprise birthday party. She didn't know any of the people. That was the real surprise, the fact that I threw her a surprise birthday party with nobody that she knew. On the day that I landed, it's like, I don't want to see people. Um, I want to lie down, please. <laughs> but it was just stranger after stranger. This is so and so. This is so and so. This is so and so. I'm just like, that's great. <laughs> um. So she moved out here June sixth. Second. Second. We went back to St. Louis uh, for my ten year high school reunion. I proposed July twenty seventh. We were married March seventeenth. How many years ago was this? Seven. So y'all relationship. Began what 15 years ago? 15, 2005. Yep, 15 years ago. Okay, yep. Well, I don't think I know. All. I never heard Farron's side, I've only heard to hear side of that story. That was such a great story. I've never story. heard Farron's side of the story. Yeah, it's it's a long one, it's it's so much more in there. <laughs> so much more. Mm-hmm. Well, like the skeleton bare bones version yes that was the abridged version cliff right. notes Sorry. right <laughs> um i'm here for it though that made me all like warm and fuzzy so okay so oh that was like super sweet so maybe this will get into a little bit of those details but one of the questions that um kept coming up and people wanting to know obviously because to hear sh- shared so much of his life story on the DIY diys episode which if you haven't listened to a podcast thank you if you haven't listened to make sure you guys go check that out it'll give you guys a little bit of context um and while you're checking things out check out melissa's episode of wording is hard which came out yes comes out well by the time this airs it'll come out yesterday oh it comes out on wednesday comes out on wednesday yeah okay and this drops on thursday so go to tears channel that's what we're trying to tell you youtube channel um so can you to hear shared again a lot of like some of his um, life experiences. 
And I'm assuming that that has had some sort of impact on your relationship. So how have you guys like navigated that and, you know, in a way that you guys are still married today? So um, just to be clear about the question, you uh, basically are asking how did his, <laughs> how did his upbringing affect us now? Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> We're, we're still constantly, constantly learning, but uh, more than anything, I am a very affectionate because I was basically raised in, it was three of us in a one bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And so we were forced to be very close together. And so I just grew up just sharing my space nothing was ever mine you know and where he comes from he had to forcing his space was very important to him so still learning like how to give him his space give him time away and him needing that time does not reflect on how he feels about me or me in any way i ain't doing sh anything wrong almost curse <laughs> I i'm not doing anything wrong but he just needs he needs his, his space and that's okay. So I think that was the biggest, one of the biggest things that, and really, um, I'm a very vocal person, whether I'm happy, sad, mad, whatever, everybody around don't know it. So, um, he's pretty quiet at home. He seems very loud and like he has all the things in the world to say, but he doesn't. <laughs> oh, it was I, a lot I tell people we are at home we just be at home we don't be doing that we don't run around doing material and stuff we just be chilling and i'm not even looking for that it's more so like if like you look so deep in thought like tell me me i'm rattling off my whole train of thought and him right. he's sitting there holding it and it's like well what's going on what happened this week what was exciting about this week what's what's your goal now like i'm constantly prodding for information and getting him to talk and now he he comes to me with it more because he sees how important it is for us that he you know gets it out so those were some things that stem from his childhood that we had to deal with in order to keep the peace at home. Listen, it's interesting, me and I, I be on the road, and I remember the first week, because this is the first time we went on tour, it was just me and him. It used to be me, him, Tom, Doe, Melissa, everybody. Josh. Josh. So this year, it's basically me and Tahir. The first weekend, he came to my room on Saturday. He was like, do, you, do we have to like eat together all the time? And I was like, no, we don't. He was like, Cool, because I just I didn't want to be the guy who didn't want to be around, but I don't mind this a long time. I be he said I be he said I be walking around like Winnie the Pooh. I don't have bottoms on. I just got my shirt, my coffee, my music. I said to here we chill it, and it be like that. Like we both be just in our room when we used to be able to go on our room. <laughs> and he, you know, it's I didn't I never knew that. I didn't get that part where you just shared about how he grew up and stuff, why he wanted his space. But he was like, man, have my own room. This tour is the best when we used to be on tour, but we ain't on tour now. <laughs> just coming back. Just stay strong. I, um, it was, it was, a, it was a lot of, so even, even now, like yesterday, we both went on drives, right? And I need the drive so I can get some personal time, listen to my music loud as I want to scream, yell, talk crap with my homeboys, all that type of stuff, just to like get that moment to recharge and just feel like, you know, I have this little pocket of space for myself. Cause a lot of times I'll just go to the bathroom, but like, you know, she was like, you don't always have to commit yourself to the bathroom. Like I'll go in the other room so you can have the space. But um, yesterday we had both agreed to go on a drive and he was so excited. He was so anxious. I was anxious. He I was, was literally rushing me to get ready so that we could leave at the same time. But it's like, we're not on a time limit. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We could leave at any time. Like, it's okay. And she was like, why are you rushing? Why, why do you seem like suspicious? And I was like, well I, well, I couldn't say it initially because I'm still working on like expressing myself and communicating cor uh, correctly. Um, I was excited more so that she wanted to go and get some time by herself. Because a lot of times I feel guilty 
mm-hmm. for wanting to be alone, mm-hmm. for wanting to have that personal time. And like, even last night we were talking about it. I told her after the fact, we talked about it a little before, like in that moment, but we talked about it a little afterwards. She was like, it's so crazy that you still struggle with telling me stuff on how you feel. But I, oftentimes in times in the past when she's felt like I've overshared to complete strangers and I'll tell them everything, but I have a difficult time talking to her. And what I told her in that moment, Melissa, before you look at Kev, <laughs> hear, hear me out before you I, get to yeah, I was like, please don't go down this road. Don't go down this road. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I told her. I just got in trouble for this on Tuesday. <laughs> Listen, this is why. This is what I told her. I was like, I tell those people who, like the stuff in my past and stuff like that, which it took me a long time to get to that point. But I told them that because I don't really care what they think. Like, I don't care. Like, their opinion doesn't hold as much weight as yours. So if I be completely open and honest with you, I know I risk a chance of hurting you by expressing how I feel. We might come together at the end and agree to disagree. But in that moment, I'm worried about, like, that's why it was so hard for me to tell her, like, I just want this time to myself because I didn't want to feel bad for saying I want some time by myself because I know how important family time is to her. But she also understands how important personal time is to me. But me always being like wanting to be the provider, wanting to be the captain of the ship, wanting to be the man of the house, I'm always worried about hurting her feelings or how she's going to feel about something I say. So a lot of times I will beat around the bush and it's easier for me to talk to a stranger sometimes than it is to her because I don't ever want to hurt her feelings. So that's why it's difficult for us to do Melissa. Strangers are strangers, but you, you're not a stranger. You're very familiar. And it's hard to talk to people that are familiar. I don't want to hurt you. I cannot hurt them for they are not people in my real life. So yesterday we had um, Dr. Lori, not Ann Watson, and she was talking about in relationships, there are often the emotional pursuers and distancers, and then there are also the, does she call them sexual mm-hmm. uh, or intimate? No, sexual. Sexual um, sure, uh, pursuers and distancers. Distancers, and what you got, what you guys have just described is literally the dynamic between Kevin and I, where he is the sexual pursuer and I am the emotional pursuer. And so, with those dynamics, I'm literally telling Kevin how important it is to share those feelings with me. And it really, uh, um, I don't know about Farron, but for me, it hurts my feelings to think that you feel safer with a stranger than you do with me. You know what I mean? So I would much rather, um, what about me makes you think I'm going to judge you? We need to address that. Exactly. Saying whatever it is you're feeling, going through, whatever emotions you have, and I'm not a safe space for you to give that to me, and you feel safer from a stranger because they're free from judgment, that's that's a that's a bit of issue. Yeah, that's a way to. I never agreed with what you <laughs> said. What, that's how he felt about the situation. I disagree. Actually, agree with that judgment? No way. If he said something else that was different, maybe I would agree with that. <laughs> but no, nope, no, nope. I don't know why. I tell you, I, I, I tell you what, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. You live, I know, it, but this you that. <laughs> I know expressing that is only going to lead to a conversation that is going to be even more uncomfortable. Here's the thing. We've never been one to really shy away from difficult conversations. We yeah. may inch into it, but we, we will have them. It's just sometimes I know how exhausting that conversation can be oh. mentally and emotionally. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I'm not in a place. Like I haven't really feel or recharge enough to go into that. Yeah, that's what I be saying, man. The way it's a you it's shut up. It's you big, shut up. You spineless okay. slug. It's a big spineless slug. Emotional what was it? Emotional what? Conversation. Yeah, I I have that. This one's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one's okay. So sometimes it's just it's not that I don't it's just like I know that conversation can lead to something else. And being where I am on my emotional journey and still unraveling a lot of layers, sometimes certain conversations take a little bit more time for me to ease into. Mm -hmm. And there are certain conversations we can have now that three years ago, hell, even one year ago, it would have been, I mean, the house would have been tense, but that shows the progress. And there are certain conversations that are still difficult for us to have because we haven't, 
progressed to that level yet. So it's as long as we're seeing the the traction, as long as we're seeing the results, like from the previous year and of and of our efforts, I think we're on the right track. It's just like nobody's perfect, and there's no there's no one size fits all when it comes to marriage. Like I, I tell a lot of people right now, especially when they be hitting me up, and I'm like, yo, love is enough to get married. It is not enough to stay married. Bye. It takes work. Okay, you cannot like it. But that, that's what anything you do, like talent's enough to get you through the door, but it's not enough to keep you there. You have to have the work ethic to go with that talent. Otherwise, you're just a funny unemployed guy. Hello. Like you, you, you out here hate on people out here getting hey, work. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Because it it, it takes work, man. So you know, I, I'm just thankful that I found somebody that is willing to put in the work and willing to put up with my stuff because I know I'm not easy, the easiest person. I'm not the hardest, but I'm I get moody. I get I get in my swings. Oh, I get in my swings and I just want to be alone. I don't want to. It's the other day. I didn't feel yeah. like doing nothing. I just was here. I was just existing, and she has to deal with that all the time. And she's always here. And then there are days when she's here and I'm here, and I got to figure out what's wrong with her. And sometimes it's me, and sometimes it's just life. Like life happens, and you still have to be able to navigate through that time. Because I was one of those people early on. It's like. All right, well, if you mad, I'm mad. The whole house going to be mad then. What's up? She's flipping over tables, knocking stuff off the town. And she ain't even said nothing. She ain't even said the reason she's upset or distant is because of me. It's just like, well, if you mad, I'm going mad. That's going to be the whole tone of the house. <laughs> I'm going to change the password on the Wi-Fi. What's up? Now, now, now where we at with it? <laughs> but that was before I learned about and learned how to converse with a purpose. It ain't about just talking. Is about talking with the with the purpose and intent to solve whatever this issue is, or at least bring it to the forefront so we can address it. Yeah, it's so good to hear. One of the things you just said that I think is again so good because I be repeating myself is um, talking with the purpose. So I find it uh, even on the tour. I have like a lot of thoughts going on in my mind, but even on the tour, as one of the only women, I was always feeling like the emotional pursuer where I'm like, you guys, let's sit down and talk about our feelings. What's going on with you to hear? Don't you want to be vulnerable right now? What's going on with Tony? Can you tell me about your past? Joshua, what happened with your mom? And, like, I'm always that person, even on the tour, I represented that person because that's how I find like intimacy and connection with people and so the thought of going back to the idea of not sharing that it it makes me feel like we we're not bonded mm -hmm. like you want to have or you're chasing a bond with a literal stranger <clears throat> while i'm chasing you does that make sense yes Absolutely. and so that's what makes it um really difficult but that's also why i really enjoy difficult conversations and i don't say enjoy like they're so much fun and they bring me joy but i know that the healthiest way to have a relationship is through those difficult hardcore i don't want to say this but i need to say this i have to say this because the more i don't and the more i you know shove it under the rug really the worse <coughs> our relationship just clear my throat. Uh, listen, we need type of clarity with every cough, okay? What's going on? I already had that wrong. I think you did. Um, but anyway, everything that we shove under the rug, everything we're not saying is huge red flags in a relationship. So the better and more often I'm able to say, um, this is what's wrong, this is what's going on, you know, can we have a conversation about as exhausting as it is, no, no truer words have ever been spoken in the last one hour and two minutes, is that these conversations are emotionally, physically, and mentally exhausting. Yeah. Like, they are hard. Yeah. And it'd be taking a while to get out of that. You, you have a conversation like that, you can't just turn on the TV. Like, you, you, you be needing a break to let the energy go back to where you can, like, have a a normal conversation because it is a, it is it is emotionally draining for sure it is so emotionally draining and the the last thing i want to say is um we had this um lady on the podcast natalie and she was talking about like being triggered and these intrusive memories and i was just telling kevin i am one of those people in my child since 30 so moody i don't know what happened but like i feel like my moods are just like they yes. are they're even higher and lower. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I get so moody. But I realize I have, I, I'm triggered. I'm one of those people that is very easily triggered. I have those intrusive memories. I have those intrusive thoughts. And once they're there, what was this? Yes. 
Uh, once they're there or I have them, I have a hard time overcoming them. So I have to talk about it. Like the only way for me to like get over it and restabilize is I need to have a conversation about this. So yep. we can have a conversation. We can address it. We can come to a resolution. I now feel closer to you because I've shared a part of me that maybe I was hiding and now we can move on. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely that person. We were like just going through the, I mean, neither one of us have really sat still um, since, we've got, since we got married. I, was, I had a job where I traveled a lot. He has a job where he travels a lot. And so the, even the being quarantined, we both like, the shock hit us, like we are both going to have to sit here. Like I'm used to somebody being gone. Right. And so, it, that first week we were like just super quiet and just kind of walking working around each other yeah. and then it was, it was like okay this this ain't gonna work so like text him from the other room i have feels like that's fantastic okay i'm on my way and he you know came into the room and i told him how i felt he told me how he felt i was like i'm so happy we talked about that and we've been fine but it's just like I, I have to get it out. I have to express this to you. I can't sit on it, even though I try to give myself time to process them. Sometimes I just need to verbalize it. And you got to be careful who you verbalize it with. So who's better? <laughs> so he gets a lot of it. Yeah. I will say that the most important element and dynamic in our relationship is communication. Mm -hmm. And that has opened the doors for so many barriers to be broken for us because I was not a communicator going into it. I was shut down. Mm -hmm. Like I, the way I agree to disagree is I just get quiet. Ah, right, you got it. Cool. That's what's up. And she knows like from my past, usually when I get quiet like that, like just let me be, or it's going to be some problems. Like it's never been directed toward her. Like I think that might've been one time, one time ever in the 15 years that I raised my voice. Mm -hmm. And like stormed out of room, but that's it. Like I would never I call her out of a name in an argument. I would never, ever, ever think about putting my hands on her. None of that. And she knows that, like to the T. I would never do that. So the communication part has opened up so many areas for me to explore on my emotional side. Because I, I told Kevin, and like when they first moved here, Kendall hugging me would freak me out. I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to be a good partner. <laughs> Wait, like major pain. Remember major pain when the kid was trying to hug him. He was like, "What's your angle, boy?" <laughs> yes. I want to tell you guys. Hold on. I want to tell you guys about something else that might be a major pain: bras that don't fit right. We all know that bras that don't fit right are the worst thing. We're all in quarantine. Nobody's wearing a shirt. We're out here in whatever it is you find appropriate. <laughs> Whatever it is you find appropriate while you at the house, not doing nothing, not needing to be seen out in public. What's the bra that you should be wearing? I'm gonna tell you, I'm happy you asked. Third Love, boo. We already know Melissa has revamped all of her bras to Third Love. Why? Because they're amazing. They're comfortable. They don't stab you with the underwire. They don't hurt your shoulders. They don't dig into your back. They are very, very comfortable bras. People DM me all the time like, Melissa, are you serious? I assure you, I'm not lying to you. Melissa don't do no I ads. Don't she don't do believe in. No she be turning ads. down ads. I'm like, girl, lie, but she can't. She I only can't says stuff it. she believes in. I only do things that work. <laughs> I can only give you my personal experience, and I'm here to tell you that my personal experience with their love is that they are legit. They have their signature half sizes. They have over 80 bra sizes. You are guaranteed to find something that works for you. Every bra is made from your comfort with comfort memory foam no slip straps and smooth scratch reband with a printed label because uh cloth labels or whatever the tag labels are so annoying you have 60 days to get your bra wear it wash it and put it to the test if you don't love it you can return it and third love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need 
Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash love hour. Love hour. Now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash love hour. Love hour. 15% off. Do it today. Today, yeah. Add Ninja up in here. Don't at me. All right. Add Ninja. I just made that up right now. I'm about to make it a thing. Uh, I'm fair enough to tell y'all. Okay. So <laughs> he literally had Baby Girl on like a, a, a a safe word basically in order to say like, yo, I need a hug from you specifically because she is so affectionate. Even still to this day, my giant 15, I mean, 14 year old, she like walks up and she would just hug. Um, And she did it a lot when she was younger, even more so. So he was like, okay, let's come up with a, a keyword when you really need a hug. And you know, he was like, because, I can't do this like all all the time. Basically. I just I didn't know how. To do it. <laughs> I didn't know genuine love. Like I did not know it. It was such a foreign concept to me that when she hugged me, it freaked me out. And like I had to come up with a safe word too when I tell her, I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't do it right now. I think it was, I think it was shiny rainbows for me, and hers was like uh, fuzzy unicorns or something like that when she needed a hug. And when I needed space, I would hit her with shiny rainbows because I didn't want to just shun her like this. So like the word was a way to say, hey, give me a little time without like physically pushing her away. And it was the same thing with Farron. Like I didn't, I didn't know how to be a comforter. You think you do until you're in a situation where you actually have the comfort. And we would be talking about something, whether it be the relationship or um, the the marriage or whether it be, you know, something going on with a job or something. And, like, she would literally be crying. I'm just looking at her like. Yes. I'll and be she, having a full-on, like, meltdown, snot and tears. And he's like, sitting across the room just looking at me. And then she would be <laughs> in the middle of her cry. She would be like, this is when you hug me and tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> And then go back to crying. And I was like, oh, because I didn't know. Like I did like I was good at being sweet from a dating boyfriend stance. Yeah. I didn't know how to be a partner in life because I I'd one never seen it growing up, didn't have experience with genuine love, uh, didn't have experience with um um what unconditional love. That's what I'll say. Because most people we love with conditions set on them. I love you as long as you don't hurt me. I love you as long as you don't lie to me. I love you, whatever, right? But when it's your partner, like that and your child, that's unconditional love. Like that's what it should be. And I didn't have any experience with that. All the love I got growing up was conditional. As long as you don't steal from us, you don't lie to us. And then when I moved out at 14, I put up so many barriers so I didn't know love. Yeah. So, I, I just had, I had to literally reprogram my thought process and love process when I got with him. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did to do that reprogramming? It was mainly her. Well, tell us, Farron, because I think that's one of the things that um, people are really interested in hearing for those people, not just men, but women as well, that maybe have a hard time accepting affection love and affection or showing love and affection and you have to be that partner that is looking for that how do you navigate and walk your spouse through that in order to have your needs met oh well i'm sorry one thing we had to really talk about was and it sounds cliche but the love language really helped us a lot too okay what are your love languages i'm acts of service and gifts yes he likes getting things and so um, when I when I first read Love Language, yes. I went, um, I traveled a lot. And so I would always come back with something, mm-hmm. no matter what it was. Sometimes it was a card I got at the airport or sometimes it was a shirt I saw because I, you know, had some free time to go shop or whatever. It was just always something that I would give to him when I would, you know, get back in, in town. But um yeah, in my love language, um, I'm affectionate and uh, th- other quality, time. quality time. Yeah, and those don't mesh. They well. don't because you want to give what you want. 
Yes. Want to love people. So while I'm sitting here trying to give him all my affection and time and all this stuff, and he's like, I don't need I that. I got you this. Right. And he's like, <laughs> I got you this. He's giving me gifts. And I'm like, okay, bye. I don't need you to give me anything. I could have got that myself. But what I can't get myself is your undivided attention. So I am the I am the crossroads of you two. I am a quality time and acts of service. I don't need the gifts. I don't need the love and affection. But I do want to sit here and I want to talk. Right. Walk something with you. I, I, I was like, if I can if I can gift you out of a talk, <laughs> I will go broke. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, yeah, that's nice, but <laughs> that, that's me. Put that phone down. Look me in my eyes. <laughs> one of the things about love languages that's really hard is speaking one that's not comfortable for you. Mm, yeah, like it's so easy for Tahir to buy gifts. He, we'd be on the road. He'd be buying fair and stuff. I gotta stop and get fair and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, I have to, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> and, um, and. But for him to accept her affection when that's not, that is hard. And I mean, love language was really important for us too. It was, it was probably the first putting words to our feelings piece of uh, resource that we had. And it's really hard. It's like learning to learn another language, mm-hmm. literally another, like Chinese or, or I think it's Mandarin actually, or Russian to speak to someone you love. Like I would equate it with that. Like you have to take that much effort because it is not natural to you. And in this case with Tahir and Farron, it is not only not natural, it is the inverse of normal. It is actually almost literally painful for it to hear. But, you know, you can't change somebody else's love language. All you can do is learn to speak it in a way that uh, they can interpret it as love. Man, it, well, it was... Go ahead. Though, just to what Kevin said, because, I mean, yes, it, it is. I could only imagine how difficult it is for him to accept my way of communicating love but also it's like the gesture that's behind the purchase for him to me is not always well received because Mm. yes you you brought me this thing and this is nice but you still didn't carve out any time for us to to connect in that so they're equally to hear or for me me and melissa were talking about this because I can't work in the traditional sense, I can't tour, you know, I feel like I got to go OD on the content. So the other day, Melissa was like, you in there shooting podcast after podcast after podcast after podcast, where's the time for me? And as the husband provider, I'm like, bro, I don't know when I'm going to be back on the road. Like, I have to feel like I'm doing my duty as a man. So if I need to make video after video and go live and go live, I either need to make my Patreons uh, feel like this was a good investment or I need to get these YouTube views up. My nature always reverts back to how do I provide for my family? Because I don't know how long this is going to go. To hear same way, we'd be talking about that. Like, you yeah. and I are very similar in this way. We could, we, we could have $100 million, like TV show thing, and we'll still be like, man, I, I'm going to make sure my family's taken mm-hmm. care of. Like, there's no amount of money or housing. Like, you, I feel like I sitting at home, I cannot, I cannot just sit at home. And me and Material were talking about this too. <laughs> Skin coming off. <laughs> like I can't just sit. So here we're saying he can't even when he's on the road, he can't even just sit and watch a TV show unless he's on the road and on a show and has to rest. But because I have no shows at night, I'm like, I gotta go, gotta go. And Melissa's like, Kevin, come watch this pandemic thing that's gonna make you terrified of me so we can both be more scared because if we're not dead yet, we surely can be. I'm like, mm, no, I'm <laughs> if I make video, at least when I make video, I feel like okay, I did something to help my family today and it never feels like enough you know what i mean so it's counter to the way i am programmed to stop and say hey let's watch movie and i'm not gonna worry about the money i I don't have employees to pay i don't have nothing to worry about i just won't watch tv with you for many hours you know what i i completely understand that and what because we can talk about how my love language and her love language doesn't match up. We can also talk about how it's difficult for me to accept her love, but for me to only accept it and address it from that standpoint is a very selfish way of going about it. So a lot of times what really helped me, besides her having an enormous amount of patience, 
was the fact that I had to take myself out of the situation and look at it from her stance. Because that's the only way you're going to, like, do better. Because I can't, like, sit up here and it's like, yo, I had such a hard bring- upbringing, and that's why I'm this way, and just only rely on that, and that be my get-out-of-jail card for everything. Like, I will never grow emotionally or mentally from that standpoint. It's only when I look at it from her standpoint or somebody that I might have wrong standpoint and see, oh, damn, I did, I, I could have done better in that situation. So even though it's difficult for me to do, the only way I, 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 I've grown is by accepting her love and by uh, reciprocating it. And I know she needs that reciprocity. If she's giving me that love, and I'm constantly shunning her, it's not only damaging her internally, but it's also damaging us. So I have to learn how to return the love and put my phone down and sit still and tell her, hey, I got breakfast, you just relax in the bed, or I'm gonna clean the dishes, or because she works Monday through Friday. She, like, I'm trying to create and trying to figure out something to do. She actually has something to do Monday to Friday. She's still working and she's still being a great mom and she's making sure dinner is done and she's cleaning up and all of that type of stuff and doing laundry and all of that. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this video. Then I'm going to do this video and all that. Like what I do is more important or uh, more enormous than what she's doing. She's carrying this huge load and it's just all on this one tray. And I feel like I got the world on my back. But, like, I don't realize how heavy this tray is because she makes it look so easy. So yeah. it wasn't until I stepped out of myself and looked at it from her standpoint and be like, I could do better. Then I, I mean, I, I, a regular job. Huh? Sorry. I, I thought but, you were done. I was saying. No, I really pushed myself to do better. <laughs> you're, you're. But it was because I had to. Freaking. Me, I had to do this. I, there was I, did, problem, I had to figure was, out from a standpoint. Y'all so stupid. Really, they are. I'm really trying to. As a man, how do I? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Uh, This dude said, as a man, how do I? (laughs) With nothing left to say. As a man, how do I? Can I? Are you done with your joke? Go ahead. Does. Because uh, from that standpoint, like. No kidding. Okay, that's the last one. That's the last one. Oh, to hear. <laughs> Just virtually put them on, bro. Put Mine's them. a pink. <laughs> Mine a pink. Long as you, long as you get, long as you good getting boxed out with some pink gloves, you saw out there. I got you. <laughs> This is the randomness, by the way, that Kevin buys and just has. And I want to throw so much. You know what? We're on a tangent. Finish your. Do <laughs> I need my own little room? No, I'm cleaning house. that room as well. No, I want to have my stuff. Kevin is a low key hoarder. Kevin is, and he wants me to not go in his room to clean it because I judge him. These are facts. It's, it's I just judge him, but he doesn't want the judgment. Instead of cleaning your room. You just want me to not go in there. That's not addressing the issue. You are a hoarder. Okay, talk. <laughs> what I was going to say to here is, does the fact that to hear, that Farron has a regular job make you feel more like, God dang, I really got to like do something because she, she has literally, it does. Yes. Every I, day. I can Every see myself being like, dang. It reminded me when I didn't have no job and Melissa had a job and I was a stay-at-home dad. And I never felt less like a man in my entire life than that time. I was like, I got to get my life together. And that was a cool year and a half because our jobs are real and we do provide value. But a lot of times <laughs> they don't take the time that a regular job takes as far as like the amount of hours. Mel, Melissa's younger sister, always gets on us because she works a regular job. She's like, y'all just wake up whenever y'all want. Go to bed whenever y'all want. Oh, you tell a little joke and you get paid the same thing. It might take me two weeks to get Oh, it must be nice. And it's like, yeah, but it also took years to get to this. Man, they don't understand yeah. us getting paid that amount they get paid in two weeks took 10 years to form that joke. Of us not getting paid nothing but what you might make. Or, bro, I've hour. been paid in bar food i've been paid in drink tickets i've been paid in exposure like i got paid in drink tickets worst. before i ever drank i'm like bro this is literally of no value i don't drink and then white people love to buy you drink as a way of like having a good set so when i was coming up it was all all the pineapple and sprite i could drink is what i got paid in you know what i mean yeah. but bro i mean when i got 40 dollars, i was like bro i got 
40. Years of zero. Bro. Years of 40. Can I just... It's, 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 a, it's such a path to get to where we are right now. And a lot of people don't realize. They think, oh, you do your little joke, joke. They don't... And, and you did it untraditionally, like, the way you did it. But I'm, I'm talking about, like, going to the club, night after night, hanging out, hoping somebody gives you a spot. But they don't understand. Even with that, like, that's an investment in your network. Because, yeah, yeah, I know I'm probably not going to get up, but I might meet somebody that might put me up on their personal show or their, their private show, or I can make some connection. Like, that's why I tell comments all the time. Open mics aren't for you really to practice your material. Because ain't nobody in there listening. It's all comments. You could do that at home in front of your TV. What you're going to open mics for is for networking. It's the same thing with college. Like, college is great if you're going for, uh, to be a doctor, lawyer, all of that. You're definitely going to utilize it. But most people, outside of, like, that general knowledge that you're going to get, the most rewarding thing that you're going to get from college is your network. And it's up to you to nurture that, those friendships and those, those contacts into something valuable. Otherwise, you just, just went $40,000 into debt for something that you could have learned on YouTube, to be honest with you. I have a question for you, Farron. To hear is a tough nut. Hey, don't ask my wife nothing, homeboy. Hey. Ask me, and I, I'll see if I want to ask her. To hear, can you ask Farron, <laughs> how did she deal with you? Oh, my God. To hear is just utterly ridiculous. He's just the most ridiculous I, really person Really quickly, before you, don't ever. forget your question. This is literally Kevin here, Doughboy, and um, Tony. Tony on tour but at like six o'clock in the morning, all of our flights were literally the first flight out. So we would arrive before TSA. We would arrive before the Delta people clocked into work. I mean, quite literally this happened several times. What are you doing? Um, and they would be joking and laughing and having a good time. And I would be like, <laughs> it is much too early. The sun is not up and y'all are laughing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's because you don't like, eat you don't eat your big your, your brisket when you're supposed to. You eat your brisket before you leave the hotel, you'll be fully awake. Brisket and hot dogs and hamburgers. Oh, so here got a chili cheese dog in Detroit Wayne Airport at 5 30. We're like, bro. And it was, bro, I'm up. Breakfast is whatever you eat in that morning. It's literally just breaking the fast of not eating no. while you Chili okay. dog is a heavy thing to kick off the, you ain't eight an hour. Let me kick this off with a chili dog. Bro, <laughs> if you're eating right, you're supposed to eat your heaviest meals in, earlier in the day. That's all I did. I was practicing good dieting. No. Look at Farron's face. Look at Farron's face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. What I was going to tell you, Farron, I'm, I'm learning oh, to hear, if you could ask Farron, tell her that I'm learning about to hear right now as you've been in therapy. How did she handle being the first person on the first line of defense dealing with all your emotional trauma before you even went to therapy? <laughs> I don't like him as a person. I but don't. For the people that are listening to this podcast, you should watch it. You should watch it. Go on my YouTube channel. You should watch this. <laughs> No, seriously. Um, it was it was difficult. I mean, but I still have my I mean my own issues that I'm expecting him to to deal with and work. You know, so it's not like I could be like, oh no, I don't have time for this, or I can't. I'm I'm not dealing with this. It's it's his it's his story, and I really truly understand the the role that your upbringing plays in who you become as an, uh, as an adult, you yeah. know, you can't lean on that as an excuse to make messed up decisions, but you can acknowledge that this is where this issue stemmed from and I need to work on it. So just the fact that he decided to that, you know what, I do need to talk to someone about this. And I was perfectly okay with me not being the person as long as he's addressing it and talking about it. Um, it was, but it was, it was difficult. We had our share of um, upsets, <laughs> upsets on, you know, things that would come up. Cause you know, us being friends with benefits for however long, it didn't teach us how to be in a relationship with each other. 
Oh, so good. Oh, oh good. Man, what you talking? That was good. <laughs> so once we were actually in it together, and then shortly after we decided, yo, we're going to do this, then we moved in with each other. So we like jumped on the fast track once we decided to be together. And um, having that foundation helped, but it did not teach us how to be a couple. Right, I get that. I totally that actually get that. makes a lot of sense. And the the fact that y'all are just having raw sex, fornicating completely outside of the will of God, that, <laughs> that doesn't te- you know. But like in all seriousness, like that benefit part doesn't teach you the relationship part. Right. And but it can cloud, especially if you're having great sex. We talk about this all the time. If you're having great sex. That makes you feel, oh, this is good. This person, I feel close. I feel this and that. But you haven't, you haven't scratched the surface on on who you are as a person, either of you. You know, we just, you know, we know to hear had the the fire and the stabbing and stuff. But to, but Farron had her own stuff, and and you eventually, the longer you are together, eventually, if you want to grow as a person, as a couple, you're gonna have to deal with that stuff. This is one of the things that I'm realizing, like. Uh, the stuff with my real dad and how I was raised and my parents and this and that, like, I, I don't remember what episode it was, but I realized, like, you can't just use that as an excuse forever. Like, yeah. it happened, and it happened a long time ago, and, you know, in, in a lot of cases, these people apologize or ask for forgiveness or whatever, but the, the person who it happened to, we'd be going on life like that wound is fresh. You know what I mean? Like, we really got to learn to to deal with it and move on. Otherwise, we'll always be, like, this is why I'm like this. Like, okay, but like, when are you going to change? Like, when are you going to yeah. do something about it? Yeah, like, that's why when are you going to learn from those mistakes that, that molded you? I mean, yes, th- this was messed up, but you can, you can set it right starting with yourself. So did you, what did you learn from that situation that you can change in your life moving forward? Yeah. So, because ain't nobody um, trying to hear, but my real dad, but my real, bro, okay. Okay. Right. Like, yes, that happened to you, but bruh. This is your life now. I was like 25 years ago, he apologized. Like, what you know what I mean? Like, what 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 are you going to do about it now? Like, Corona, like, this is happening. Nobody started it, nobody wanted it, nobody could have predicted it nor controlled it. Absolutely. We all are gonna have our like there's life. this is a life-changing thing for people people who have closed their restaurants are never going to open again there's comedy clubs and like this is all going to be an absolute truth that this happened but yep. 15 years from now nobody's going to want to hear but it was you know that rona ain't never recovered like you're we're, we're all going to figure and now obviously that path forward isn't going to be the easiest, the easiest. it's going to be completely unknown but we're going to have to i was reading a tweet today and the person was like it's time for us to accept this. Like, I, Melissa and I joke, but we're serious. We wake up every day like, man, this ain't over. Like, mm-hmm. it'd be really the same as it was yesterday. <laughs> and she saw something on the internet that said, there's only three days in the week now, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> what that actual day of the week is doesn't even matter <laughs> anymore. But I said all that to say, like, we have to, like, yes, to hear all that crap that happened to you and to me and Melissa had our stuff with Farron. But we have to learn to move on from that mm-hmm. in a healthy way. Otherwise, you're perpetually going to be living in a ground dog, groundhog day of of your life. past, of your of your life. That was good. Yeah. I agree. So, um, are there more questions? But um, yeah, the I just let him let him tell his tell his story, be vulnerable. I don't. And like Melissa brought up earlier, um, the the bigger issue is if he feels like he can't be that person with me. You know, if he feels like, you know, he he can't it, express things. Like he got into it with a, a friend not so long ago. And this was this friend was always doing something. So I really, really strongly dislike him. But um it, you know, but it was his friend. So I respect your friendship. I just don't invite him to my house. So <laughs> Uh, but then he was, he explained, I asked him if he needed to talk. He said, no. And then he started, I heard him on the phone talking to someone else and it's like, okay. Oh, he was talking to Kev. So it was like, I used to think you wouldn't snitch on me. You absolutely would snitch on me. You snitch on me in 0.6 seconds. 
<laughs> only to her, and because we married, they can't make us testify against each other. So you still oh, do it. Fair. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. <laughs> But um, yeah, I heard him talk to someone else and I was fine with it, but it also made me realize like I did something to make him feel like he couldn't talk to me. And then when he told me, he was like, I know how much you dislike him. So I didn't want to bring it to you. He's like, well, it wasn't to shut out your feels on the, on the situation, but nothing this person does that, especially something messed up towards you surprises me. So I can't be like, oh, man, he did that. Because I'm going to be like, classic him, <laughs> you know? You know so, what? Here, maybe do you think, it, this is just curiosity. Do you think it was like a I told you so thing? Like, oh, if I go tell her now, she's going to be like. Well, not, not so much that because if she does that, she does that jokingly. She would never do that with the right. intent to like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Harm, harm me and make me feel some type of way. It was just that we, we've had numerous conversations about this person. And she literally said, you know, it's funny. Well, Paris, continue to, said you that know, to be his friend. Don't tell me about none of the stupid stuff he does because I told you a while ago to let him go. And she was right. But I told her, like, the reason that I held on to the friendship is I, I feel like this person genuinely means well. He just didn't have somebody in his life to kind of like, you know, that's stupid. Why would you do that? Because mm. a lot of people just use him for his resources. Yep. So uh, I was trying to be that person, but sometimes you got to let people go who don't show you any progress and change. And this person has consistently remained the same with his integrity and his actions. And it's like, this last time was just like, bro, you called me with some foolishness during a pandemic, and I don't know what's next for me and my family. And you called me with something so asinine. Like, it is ridiculous. It is of such a... Yes. Okay. No, you said it right. I saw her face and I was like, oh, snap. I said the word, the word, the word, the word wrong. And it's the placement of that word. Yeah, that was perfect. But, <laughs> yeah. was really good. <laughs> so I, I just, I was like, you know what? This, this is the perfect time to do it. While we're going through this, we'll be able to clean break, clean split, and now we don't ever have to talk again. Like, and I, the way I am, That's like, it. she'll tell you, when I cut people off, like, for real, for real, over. Yeah. Like, over my mom four years we didn't talk over forty dollars but it was the principality of which the forty dollars accumulated not the actual forty dollars but when i cut you off cut off you didn't talk to your mom more than forty dollars she was dead to me forty dollars <laughs> it's the principality of which the forty dollars accumulated First of all, what is the full definition of principality because i do not think it I is think short meant, for principal he meant the principal <laughs> It's the principalities of things, Smokey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me tell you something. That was, um, Farron is a saint because clearly oh. she has the patience and the long suffering. Uh, <laughs> we can stand here with you today. What is the definition? It's absolutely. He meant, it, he, was, uh, he was making a joke from Friday. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, from, um, for sitting here today and allowing, um, extending the grace to allow this growth and evolution yeah. of your relationship. Shout I out. think that Shout that out. is, um, and that's not to say, that's no shade or disrespect to the work that obviously to hear has No, that's a little shade to hear. Anytime no. you can shade to hear, you should take the opportunity. Uh, because obviously <laughs> he's put in a lot of work as well. But um, I just think that that's like truly amazing. I've learned um, truly, uh, quite a bit about. And I've also realized how similar um, our relationships are, as different as they are, how similar they really are, yeah. which really makes you feel like at some point we're all kind of going through the same thing. Right. And I'm just, the only thing between me and you is I'm taller than you and Farron <laughs> and Kendall are taller than Tahir. So she's going through like looking down into here like, you go to bed to here, go to bed, little baby. And he has to go to bed. And the only difference between us is that you always take Melissa's third love bras and I respect fair and stuff. Come on and That's shout out to the third love. Say don't do my babe. Um, so I You're supposed to say don't do my babe. Oh, don't do my Oh. I thought you were talking to Farron. No, child. man, you say what Farron said. Don't do my babe. I need I need your protection. I can't, I can't take it. <laughs> 
She was like, listen, man, the ad, but the ad. I respect it. She listen was loyal to the ad. Them bras is good, don't you agree, Cam? No, I no. <laughs> I, I disagree. Um, okay, so I think those are all the things that I wanted to cover. I will allow you guys the space to anything you guys wanted to say or whatever. Anything you want to say. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, people were very interested in how I handle um, him and with his upbringing, his backstory and everything, but he got a lot to deal with with me too. <laughs> so I don't want to make it seem like he's the um, only unstable person. We balancing this together. So he got he got his hands full too. That's so too. that was really sweet and actually <laughs> Um, really good. I think sometimes we do, we can't have an unfair look at relationships. Because Tahir's at the forefront, so he's yeah. on podcasts all the time talking right, about right. fear and being in the shadows. Yes. Yeah. Um, Behind the scenes. I, I I guess it also comes with like, even though she was my wife and we were married, there's still a lot of things that I didn't open to her. Uh, and I, I think that's one thing that like, I, all right, I'll be honest with you. I had this complete misconception of what marriage had to be. Mm. Like, <laughs> like even like everything. Like I thought it was like the Holy Trinity mm-hmm. and you know, like all the, the nasty fornicating you were doing before marriage, you can't do that afterwards because God is really looking and it's got to be holy. And uh, you can't hang out with friends anymore. Like I had all of this wrong and one of the, the best things that we did prior to getting married, it was actually the night that we, I, I proposed, was have a lot of difficult conversations then. And mm-hmm. those conversations opened the door for understanding and patience if something should ever happen to come up that you've already kind of laid the groundwork, so to speak, the foundation for how you would handle certain situations. You know, if the ex comes up or, or anything of that nature. So we had a lot of uncomfortable conversations and we were, we were a little buzz. So that helped to, to kind of like ease into it. Uh, <laughs> bro, we were, we were, we were getting drunk in a jacuzzi. I had got a suite for the night I proposed and the, the jacuzzi was right behind the bed and the, the, it was, it was ridiculous, but we were getting drunk. Do you have to tell the whole proposal story? Um, he basically took over his, um, the dinner for his 10 year, uh, what was it? High school, high, high school reunion. Yeah, he, he made it all about him. Since he was uh, over, <laughs> since he was over it, um, leading the charge of planning it and stuff, he brought in someone to sing. Um, wasn't it? Nothing, nothing even matters by yeah, Lauren Hill. That was like our song. Yeah, um, he brought in someone to sing. He brought in a photographer. Um, and wasn't somebody like playing the piano or guitar? Or the something? acoustic guitar was playing. Acoustic guitar and everything. And he got up to like, you know, thank everybody for being there and talk about, oh, we've come, we've come so much. And then he turns and starts walking towards me, like digging in his pocket. And I just like lost it. <laughs> like, I don't even think he got a chance to ask. I was like, just yes, yes. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Did you know? That was but here's the thing. Her daddy still can catch these hands because her dad almost ruined it by calling her and be like, sorry, sorry, I'm not going to make your nuptials. And he almost ruined the surprise. This was seven years ago, eight years ago almost, and I still haven't forgave him. That's what I said. When I hold a grudge, I, I, I literally told him, like, yo, whenever I see you, we still got we still got to hash this out. And I mean that wholeheartedly with everything in me, every fiber. I want to fight her daddy. Like, I'm not even kidding. Not- let it go. Let it go. The donut story to hear, people are asking for it. Oh, this you want to tell them about the donut story? I'll tell them. I want tell to them, Kev. Why? We're in Columbus, Ohio. Why do mm-hmm. you remember the city? In the code, Tahir had purchased a box of donuts for the squad because he's a lovely person. These donuts were amazing. Since Tahir is the host, he didn't get a chance to eat one. He was like, you know what? I'm going to save my donut. It was donuts. a specific type. Yeah, I don't remember. Blue, it was a blueberry something that was amazing. It's been like three years ago now. So I don't it was a blueberry glazed cake donut. That's, That's what, what it was. was. I had planned to eat it with a cup of coffee when I got back to the hotel. 
And Tahir said he's going to take a shower. He's going to put his robe on, hot cup of hot cup of coffee, and his blueberry cake donut. Now, mind you, Tony, Do, or not Do, Tony, me, Josh, we had already had some of the donuts. We had already eaten them. They were amazing. So Tahir was like, oh, yeah, no, it's cool. I'm going to save mine. Melissa, thinking she's being a good wife, just being a terrible person. <laughs> she thought I bought the donuts, and I'm supposed to be eating right, being healthy. So what she's going to do is make sure I can't eat a dozen donuts by myself. Little does she know, I already had mine. Ah, too late. So we're walking to uh, grab a bite to eat after this show. Melissa gives the box of donuts. No, 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 no. Everybody knows. What happened was everyone has, like, their merch bags. So we're, like, walking, trying to find a place to eat. And I actually was like, to here, I'll hold those donuts for you. Because he has, like, a bunch of stuff in his hands. And I'm like, I'll just oh, hold yeah, the donuts you're for right. you. So I get Something the donuts. Him and somehow thought they were mine. I, because we're all oh, just grabbing you just thought stuff. Everybody was just grabbing yeah, stuff. we're all just kind of grab. Like I would grab whoever stuff is there. Like I don't know who's is who. Yeah. And so I have the box of donuts. Okay, now continue. So Melissa gets into a homeless man. Okay, we go to eat. No, the homeless man is like asking and begging for food. Everyone's like ahead of me, and I'm like, oh, I have these donuts. Now let me give him a donut, two Child. donuts. Here, sir. Let me give him the box. And I'm like feeling all warm and fuzzy inside because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm literally the best person. Like Mother Teresa, who I'm over here <laughs> and curing the homeless problem and hunger problem, and in also America. helping my husband at the same time. Like wife of the year award, send it to me. So we're coming back <laughs> from the restaurant, and and to here goes. Oh, listen, where <laughs> where's those where's those donuts at? I'm gonna you know we're about to go back to the hotel. I'll just take them now. And she was like. Oh, I gave it to the homeless guy. Now, mind you, we are walking back past the homeless guy at this time. So we see him. He has the whole box open. He's touching okay. all the donuts. <laughs> I never expected this. He was a little, you know, you know, he was homeless. So you can imagine. And he's just like, so Tony was rubbing it in. He was like, ah, oh, to hear, man, go get one back. He might not have touched the one you was looking for. <laughs> was like, woo! I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> I tell you, to hear was legitimately he upset was so mad. with Melissa. I Frankie. was so sad. Like I was so sad. You feel better the... or worse about the donuts than deleting the footage? Oh, they're neck and neck. The I was like deleted. to the point of tears. I was like, why would I do that? Oh my god! I was <laughs> so. Bad. The footage delete affected six people. The donuts was just all to hear. But why is to hear always in the things that I mess up? Maybe you subconsciously hate him and try to destroy him at any time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to plug it? <laughs> Farron, Farron and, and the kid have a podcast too, guys. Really? Uh, what yeah. you talking? It's, it's a work in progress. So first, uh, we started it because we just like have goofy but serious conversations about you know her life as a kid and um it, every time we like go on one of our rants we're like man we should have like recorded that or something like somebody sh somebody else should have been here we can't just be here talking it's just us so we started it as more of like a hobby you know something doing now we're like i want this to be better so we hit pause on it so that we can do it right because it's just on youtube i think it's like six episodes now what is it called how was school how was school podcast on well, YouTube. school is home now so that's even okay it's in the comments of the live i'm gonna put it is it uh whose youtube page is it on it's it's its own youtube page so oh okay i think uh, kat just put it there yeah but that's not gonna be there for the main episode okay how was school podcast so yeah. I put that under their name. So make sure you go check that out. Search YouTube, subscribe. Oh, wow, that is nice. Watch Tahir's Wording is Hard. Very, very amazing show. So shout out to Tahir and Farron. Farron gave him the idea for that show. And Did she? It's fantastic. I had a lot of fun. So funny. Listen's episodes out. Tony, me, and Clayton Thomas also have an episode out. New episodes every Wednesday. I think Tahir has 12 in season one. Uh, if that Rona is lifted, you should just keep it going to here week to week. Don't even let. Oh, oh yeah, God. yeah. I think I think we're gonna do that. Uh, we were talking with the squad last night because I actually had to scrap one of the episodes. So if we do it with the squad on here, then that'll be the twelfth oh, episode. So okay. that would work perfectly. Yep, let's do that. All right. Anything else you guys wanted to give the people your socials so they can um, find you? 
Uh, y'all know me already. This at to hear more dot com. I know a lot of people were saying that they didn't even know I, I was in a, a relationship, I'm married, all of that type of stuff. And I am a private person with my personal life. Like I am very like, yo, know, and that's that's even before I got like where I am now, I've just always been like, I give people what I want them to see. But like also with them, like like me, Kevin, let's you you can attest to this. Like we would be out in the airport and people run up on us, already got the camera in hand, coming up to take don't even ask anymore. So Part of it was also sheltering them. Like I never, I try not to say the kid's name on camera, um, and I don't even follow her on her socials because I don't want somebody to go through mines and, and see her and stuff like that. So I try to give a little separation for them because they didn't really sign up for that. But um, I can see that fan is interested in playing a bigger role in the success of everything that I got going on. So you know, with in, incorporating her with wording is hard. She finds all the words for wording is hard. I don't see any of it. She sends it directly to the producers with the pronunciation key, with the sentence and all of that type of stuff. And supporting the podcast, you know, telling her what lights to get and what mics and all of that type of stuff. So I'm trying to bring her slowly into it as she wants to uh, at her speed because she's still not like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do for a living. Right now it's just, it's fun for her, so I'm not trying to push her toward anything. But also, like if I'm going on a road four or five days, I don't, I don't. I feel like I'm not here to protect them against the crazy people running. Oh, you, you to his way. Let me get it, it, it. all of that foolishness. So uh, that, and then I also, it ain't none of y'all damn business. Well, it's simple as that. Sometimes it's it, you don't need much more than that. I, I give y'all videos every day. Sometimes multiple videos a day. My private life can be my private life. Now, my private want to go public. They can do that, but y'all ain't got to know anything. Then y'all be like, well, how often do you poop? Hey, oh, wait a second, man. Relax. It's a lot. You, you, you hush. <laughs> you hush. All I have to say is amen to hear. I feel like when you are in the public eye, it is very easy to feel like you become property of the public and you become entitled, or people become entitled to your business. It's part of the reason when celebrities go through things and they feel like they, they feel the need to give a public statement about their divorce. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't say I do. I wasn't even invited to your wedding. Why am I owed an explanation about the demise of it? I'm not, that's your business. And mm -hmm. so I think it is so important to um, recognize that divide, even with us, um moving i mean that's as much as we're saying because i had even a hard time like we had weeks if not months of discussion about how much we wanted to share of that because some things are sacred some things are private and when you become so public oh i thought that was a door when you become so public you lose um pieces of yourself that are just meant for you and so even um, good on you for honoring, you know, Farron's boundaries and recognizing she wants to be involved, but recognizing to what extent. We have to have these conversations all of the time. Because if it was up to Kevin, I would be in every video all the time. And I just, this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's not what I want to do. So let's figure out how to make this work where we can coexist. So I know that's like a work in progress. So good for you guys for recognizing that. But I also want to point out, don't undo it. Just like you are hilarious, Farron is funny. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, let me tell, let me tell y'all something, man. She makes me laugh and show my guns. Like you laugh like like that. You see this? This exposure, right? All her. She's a nut. Like complete. Like if I didn't know she would love me, I would think she would kill me because I would think she was crazy. Because she she. I, I promise you, fair. Listen, when you said that, she was just like, <laughs> fair, fair. Literally came in the living room one day and did this, bounce like like bouncing like boom, 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 all around the couch, and then walked out. Didn't say a word, just did that. And I looked at her while she did it, and then I watched her leave out, and I was like, she gonna kill me in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now imagine that twice because the kid is now the same way so it's like bro like so she, even though she don't want to be in the spotlight a lot of times i'll be telling her yo yo you so how like with melissa's episode hey so i'm calling it right now melissa's gonna wash you care her episode is 
ridiculously funny, bro. I, I, I like Melissa it. does not like that you keep saying I that. I don't. I feel like you're putting bro. a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure on it, and I just don't. I do told it. Melissa <laughs> she's gonna blow me out of the water in my whole career, and all I ask is that she puts me in her rider. I'm tired yeah. of carrying it all. You be bro, the let me tell you something. People, are, this is what makes it so dope. People know what to expect with Kev and me. They know our dynamics. They know our back and forth. With you, they only got to see like tidbits or they only get to see this. And on this, you're moderating. So you still can be completely let go, right? On this show, you show, I saw a different side of Melissa. <laughs> I was like, well, you said be, be, be where future. Don't go around future. I was like, oh, she on one. <laughs> Bro, Melissa, listen, everybody watching, make sure you watch Melissa's episode of Wording is Hard because it is one of the, it was one of the highlights. Let's release it now, man. Oh, Shoot. I'm excited to watch it. Say what? It. Release it down. Nah. <laughs> release the hound. Yeah. We got we to gotta let Clayton's episode get all the views it can get because Melissa's going to come in and dominate and blow people out of the water, bro. I'm telling you, that episode is dumb funny. Oh, I'm excited to see it. I just really quickly, uh, we've been talking long, I'm but hungry. I know I'm hungry too. I just really quickly want to tell when I tell people when I became Team Farron. So for uh, I wanted this story to come up too. We um, uh, do the tour in one of the stops is Hawaii. It's actually our favorite, well, my favorite stop because it's the time where like people bring their family and we're like all together and we're like, I don't know, you're no longer just on the road. It becomes like a vacation time for the tour. It's one of my favorite things. Anyways, because we've done it so many times. It's only been twice, child. But in two ways. Oh, I must um, great, though. Farron came the last time, and we went. Um, it was like, they're kind of like go karts. They're, they're like moped yeah, cars. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Cars. I okay. don't know what they're called. Okay. And we literally, first of all, we're the worst. We take these things all around the city, and I don't, I'm not quite sure we follow all of the rules. We absolutely don't. And then one time we were like literally headed toward the freeway. And that was I the mean, one thing they were on like, the do on not way. go on the freeway. That's all we asked. We're like, we'll turn right here. Oh my God. I was completely freaked out. Anyways, before we get to that point, so we had did this the first year and then Farron comes the second year and we're all sitting or like standing in the little like fill out this paperwork and you need to watch the safety video. And the guys are loud because they always are cracking jokes, having a good time. And Farron is like concentrating, like trying to read all the documentation, trying to pay attention to the TV, giving all the safety notes and they're loud. And Farron says, excuse me. You guys have no, done no, this no, before. No, no, no. Don't don't give her that little excuse. What me. did she say? She had a car. It was excuse me, but it wasn't excuse. It was excuse me. It was. Y'all have done this before. before. This I is have my it. first this time. This is my first time. I want to make sure I hear the safety instructions. So I would appreciate if y'all would. So I yeah, can she watch definitely this. did this. We were like, when <laughs> I tell you, it was at that moment that I was like, I aspire. <laughs> no, man, I'm so quiet I in there. Aspire. Farron has checked so many people. And I can't, you know when you're a little kid and your mom or your, your dad might have said something and like check somebody or something, like you got embarrassed? Like, I, I don't even get embarrassed at this point. I just feel sorry for the person that she's talking to because Farron can, she sharpens her words like daggers. So when she throw them, I, that's why I don't be want, like, I don't want, I always want to converse with her. Like, sometimes I'm like, I can't, I don't have the armor. And my, my blood level's already at halfway. I am not going to be able to finish this fight. It's going to be a fatality. I to grow up without a father. It's a lot that's going on. I haven't redone my will. It's a lot that I need to do before I die. I haven't drove a Lamborghini. I, I need to poop. I can't die with poop because then I got to deal with that when I get there. So it was like, let me just, at least let me poop before we have to stop saying Listen, I am always completely here for a woman that is not afraid well, to Melissa said that out loud. She was like, oh, I'm team Farron. Oh, in that moment, I was like, oh, no, I'm here for this. Because this guy, was trying to listen, too, and he, she didn't did it before. And because this is the reason why. Being with Doughboy, Tahir, Tony, Kevin, all in once, they are loud. They are rambunctious. They are attracting attention when you're in an airport with 50 11 000 people and everybody is looking at to hear and kevin and doughboy and Tony. Bruh, i didn't even tell y'all this story to, to hear brought up on diys we were in freaking orlando this tour and i had messed with to hours ago mm -hmm. okay 
I went to get some Raisin Bran Crunch from CVS, right? In line. Mind you, this is like 2 o'clock in the morning, 1.30. Walgreens. Walgreens. Tahir busts into this Walgreens. <laughs> this is what Tahir does. Loud, in public. This is Tahir. Kevin, you gonna have me out here in this car by myself. You told me to stay in the car, and now I'm out here, and you buying Raisin Bran? That's okay. <laughs> That's how you do me? Okay, Kevin. Fine. I'll be in the car then. And then stands like this. <laughs> the that person, the, the pe there was people in line. They were all looking at me, and I was just like, oh, my <laughs> He was literally yelling like that in public, and I couldn't even say nothing. So like, and people were like, "Hey, you better get your your boyfriend mad or girlfriend." And I was like, "Oh my god, I, was just, I don't be embarrassed." No. He had me dead to right because he yelled for like two minutes straight, and I couldn't even I couldn't say anything because I was he had Yo, me. He had I was me. so I was, mad I couldn't record it because if I were recording, it would have looked staged. But the the energy really. I said, I'm going to be right back, and you leave out the car. Now, I'm driving around the parking lot looking for you. And what are you in here doing? Buying cereal. Cereal. This is why we always fight. This is because your communication is not where it needs to be. I left my family for you. <laughs> yes, he had me. He had me dead to oh. roll. I was, at that point, I didn't even go back. I was like, you, you won this one. I can't, I can't even do nothing at this point i'm you and it was also funny too because he was so loud for he i can't describe how far away he was from me because it was like a humongous walgreen so everyone in this store in the middle of the night is hearing this and i'm just like wow you are you are <laughs> yo that is he what came out this store with a look of defeat on him he was just like <laughs> <laughs> that was no one went through your mind like, oh, this is perfect. I'm oh a man. <laughs> so I literally I came so it was two parts of this Walgreens. They had the li the liquor separated from like the regular Walgreens part. So I went to the liquor part to go grab a bottle, tell them what to do, you know how I do. And I can't say he was gonna wait in the car. So as I look around the store, I finally grab it, pay for it, I go out to the car, he's not there. So I get in the car, I'm driving around, like maybe he went to go get some food. Oh, you really oh, did. I really did drive around. I was looking for you. So when I went to the Walgreens and I saw you in line, I was like, okay. <laughs> Cause no, you didn't text me another, you just left the car and I was Walgreens. like. It was, huh? the liquor store Walgreens was, it was one thing, but that Walgreens had to keep the liquor separate. That's right, so they weren't connected. So it, I didn't see yeah, you go in. it was in. one where you couldn't go. Uh, and I didn't realize you couldn't go from inside to the Walgreens. Oh it was like God. boxed off. Yes, so I drove around and the cops was out crazy. So I was like, I don't want to be out here like this Florida, bro. So I don't want to be like out here longer than I have to. And I'm looking for him. He ain't call or text or nothing. So I'm like, man, where bro at? So I, I pull up a walk in and I see him. I was like, okay, I'm going to teach you about leaving and not texting. Yeah, I didn't realize that he couldn't. I thought he would just walk across, but I didn't oh. realize it was it was a lie. And I didn't deserve that, by the way. <laughs> no, you're, it was you're hilarious. Ask for, ask for that. I did not ask for that, but it was funny. You asked for it by name. Yes. She was I, like, hey, is, is embarrassment here? Man. <laughs> oh, embarrassment, is he here? Uh, I, so. I wasn't even really embarrassed. I was, but I was more like, he got off a better joke on me oh. than I have ever got off on him. Tahir is never afraid to go there. He um, will never. No, never afraid to go there. But would I say all that to say this is what it's like being on the road with them? And so for Farron to come in on mm -hmm. like day two of us being in Hawaii and was like regulating, pull to that hear, down, pull on? that down, pull that down. Don't don't embarrass her like that. Uh, <laughs> he got she gained all of my respect, and now we're gonna oh figure out what's God. going on with you. Oh. Sir, so you can not just come out of water. Just we're not in Hawaii. Oh my gosh. I just I just took the braids down. This is two hours. I'm hungry. All right. I think that's it. Thank you guys <laughs> so very much for joining us on this very special edition of the Love Our Podcast with Tahir and Farron Moore. Make sure that you follow them on all social media platforms that they have. Uh, is your uh, Instagram public, Farron? Yeah. Uh, do you? Can I say that loud? Oh, okay. I mean, everybody's saying it already. It's fine. Okay, so um, <laughs> at Farron Moore, at, I think it's just to hear more, it's not to hear more. Who cares comedy. about to hear? 
Um, <laughs> thank you guys for, honestly, thank uh, my audience really quick, really quick. Thank you to the audience for being invested in the ecosystem that has spawned from all deaf digital and like being interested in the people that are in our ecosystem uh this has been a super fun episode and it was by popular demand so i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope all of your questions were answered um to the extent that we were willing to go there because again they are private people and we don't need to be all up in their business but we definitely learned a lot thank you farron thank you to hear bye 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 bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Enough! Okay, in the meeting.